All right. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Ariana Schaefer. Say hi. Hey, guys. Uh, we're here to do a top 10 horror kills in horror films. Well, it's just my list is more... I have other kills from other... Like, it's not really a horror kill, some of them, but they're really messed up and awesome. So there's, there's a couple on here that it's not a horror movie. But I'll start off with my number 10. And my number 10 is... Friday the Thirteenth, Part Two: The Wheelchair Kill. When he, when Jason um, uses his machete on that guy out of nowhere, and then he falls down those flight of steps. That was that was pretty messed up. Yeah, it's pretty iconic that death. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. All right, what's uh your number ten? My my number ten is more than one person. It's the um. I don't know if you ever seen this movie. It's from it's from the eighties horror film The Burning and it's the Wrath Massacre. Oh man, yeah, that's such a freaking awesome scene. Yeah, I just watched that recently. Because I'm not gonna lie, I love the film, but the film is very slow paced and when that happens it's kinda like goes from zero to one hundred very quick. Mm-hmm. I think that movie's blood looks so awesome, doesn't it? Like it looks real. Well Tom Sabini did do the special effects for that. I even think that, in, like, the Friday the 13th movie, some of the blood kind of doesn't look that good. It looks, I mean, it looks good, but it doesn't look as good as that movie for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Tom Savini was um, asked to do the special effects for part two, Friday the 13th, but he decided to do the burning instead, so. Yeah, that's funny. My number 10 is a movie he left, and your number 10 is a movie he did instead. Yeah. Uh, my number nine is... Hostel 2, that lady who killed that that girl from Roseanne. That that scene is really, really messed up and hard to watch. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't seen the second hostel. Just the thing the one scene I see I saw with it's the girl hanging much, upside down. Yeah, it's on the poster, that's why, because yeah. it's the most messed up scene in the damn I think that's the one of the most messed up kills I've ever seen. That was actually my number one almost. Yeah, but I, then I, I, I don't. I, I should check them out, but I'm not really a big fan of like over the top torture. Yeah, Th like, that's Saul, just one that Saul's, Saul's different. That's it, a different story. Yeah, but this kill it just sticks with me for some reason. It's just sick. <laughs> uh, all right, what's your number nine? Now my number nine is from Terrifier, and that's the um, hacksaw death. Oh yeah, that that scene. That was one of the yeah, that was one of the most messed up scenes I think I've seen in a horror movie. Period. Because you'd think that they would cut it, cut away from it at some point, but they show literally every single detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's pretty messed up. I don't know. Like I even I even told the dude who played him. And he's like, they're going to top that in the next one. Oh, man. I know, right? How the hell do you top that? Um, am I on my next one? My number yeah. Eight? All right. My number eight is Final Destination 1, Sean William Scott's death scene. I mean, there's way better death scenes in the Final Destination movies. Yeah. But this one is just the most funny because it's, like, out of nowhere. Like, I remember when that first happened, I was like, holy shit. Like, I just didn't expect it at all. Like, I was just sitting there thinking, I mean, I don't know. I just didn't think that would have happened. I just thought it was funny that Sean William Scott was in a horror film because he was in, like, all comedies around that time. Mm -hmm. Like, the American Pie movies and all that. Yeah, I love those American Pie movies. I don't like the straight to dvd sequels though but the no. only yeah the only ones i like are the the normal ones i heard they're making another one too oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah final destination i think deserves its own list top 10 best final destination kills yeah there are so many great kills mm -hmm. what is your favorite final destination kill well while we're on that um my number eight is also a final destination kill Oh, sick. From, from the third one, because the third one is my favorite of all the films, mm -hmm. and it has my favorite death in all of the films, and that's um, the nail gun death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that scene is pretty messed up. I don't know why. I just 
that that scene all that was always my favorite. Always stuck with me for some reason. I think that scene and the scene of uh, when they're in the tanning beds. That's those two are the best scenes in that movie. Oh yeah. Or the, the boyfriend, he gets killed pretty sick too, though, because that freaking thing just cuts him in half, like into a million pieces or something, or like in half. The boyfriend, her boyfriend gets killed later. That was pretty messed up too. Yeah, I just like like you said though. I just the final destination kills should just have their own separate like do like a separate list on just that. Mhm. Exactly. Yeah. Um. My number seven is the Saw Six opening trap. I don't know if I should spoil it because I don't know if you've seen Saw Six or not. I've se- I haven't seen Saw Six, but I've seen the a lot of the traps. Like I've watched top ten best Saw trap videos before. Mhm. Yeah, this one was with this black girl and this fat guy, and they have to cut off each other's limbs. Yeah, well, I've not- seen I- I've seen that. I know yeah. what you're talking about. They're like taking. Like pieces of their um, flesh and putting it on the weighing thing. Uh huh. And the fat guy starts cutting off his, and then she looks for hers, and there's nothing there. And then yeah. She, then she starts getting that that freaking um, axe or whatever, and she just chops her fucking arm off. And her look on her face is like one of the scariest shit I've ever seen in my life. That's like one of the sickest scenes in any of these. The Saw movies deserve a top ten of their own too. Yeah, like Saw traps, best Saw traps. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your number seven? And my number seven is something that you don't really see what happens, but it's just the whole. Um, it is very. I I just thought it was very sad, and that's um Annie's death and Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Oh yeah, that's pretty messed up too. Because you just see her in the bathroom at the mirror, and then she looks. Or she looks behind her, and there he is, and you just, it's like slow-mo running, and then it just fades to black, and you just hear shit slamming around, and mm-hmm. you, you, her, she's screaming, and he's stabbing her. What you How did she end up naked, though? It's like, maybe her robe got <laughs> ripped off. I don't know. But what did he do to her, exactly? I think in the director's cut, they showed sort of what happened. Like, she got stabbed, and it's basically the same thing that happened to her in the first Rob Zombie's Halloween, but more severe. Yeah. It's just weird seeing her in I like I like how she's in these two movies, Daniel Harris. Yeah. Even though she's in four and five. But Rob Zombie was like, I don't want to have any cameos from other people from the old Halloween movies. And he has like one of the biggest stars of the Halloween movies in it. He should have just asked other people from the movies, like even Jamie Lee Curtis, to have a cameo or something somewhere. I don't think she would have done it, though, at the time. Yeah. Why do you think that, though? I don't know. I think she... I, I, she just seems like that kind of... That wouldn't have done it. I Me mean, Now she would do it, but like at the time, I don't think she was very... Um, she she didn't really do a whole lot. I mean, she did mo- uh, movies, but like she wasn't really in the spotlight that much at that point in time. Like I didn't really see her in a whole lot of movies. I don't know. That's just what I what I personally. She was doing yeah. Activia commercials, I think. <laughs> Activia. She was having bowel movements or something wrong with her. Then I guess that's why she. That's couldn't basically do her. all she was doing around that time is those Activia commercials. She even makes fun of it in those Halloween interviews. <laughs> I like the memes. It's like, Michael, you scared the Activia out of me. Yeah. And someone also said <clears throat> that um, Michael Myers and her are both too old enough to both be using it. <laughs> what is it, like yogurt or something? Yeah. To keep you from, like, shitting yourself or something? I, I have no idea. Um... <laughs> All right, my number six. Am I number six now? Yeah. My this is this is not a horror movie at all, but it is one of the sickest shit I've ever seen in an animated movie. Period. I think it's. I have another. Yeah, Joker. Yeah, I'll just say it first. Batman: The Dark Knight Returns. Joker kills like three kids and like two random fucking people on a love cruise. Like he's he's. You ever seen The Dark Knight Returns Part Two? No. Yeah, it's freaking sick. Like, the Joker in that 
is probably the sickest Joker I've ever seen. Because he just stabs the living crap out of Batman. He just, like, it's really messed up. Like, it's fucking messed up. Well, I consider him, the Joker himself, like, horror-related. Because he the shit that he's done. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite Joker? Well, I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen the original. Probably Heath Ledger, just because I wasn't a big fan of the look of Jared Leto. Yeah. I don't know, I thought it was too glamorous for the Joker. Yeah, he was kind of like... Like a pimp. Yeah, (laughs) like like a a pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's even the dude who played... um, Ter- you know, Art the Clown, he hates Jared Leto's Joker. A lot of people didn't really like his Joker. I don't hate it, but I could have gone without the tattoos. I really could have. Yeah. Um, but that's just because I'm just a complete Joker fanboy. I'll take any version of him. If he's a... Fr- <laughs> any version. There's a version of the Joker where he looks like a Christmas tree. I love that version. <laughs> Uh, all right. What's your number five? No six. Oh, number six. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if you've seen this movie, but the shish kebab death and Happy Birthday to Me. I've never seen Happy Birthday to Me. Yeah, it's a very obscure eighties horror film, but like the all the deaths I, are very creative for the time period, just because nineteen eighty one, you kind of see like sort of like the same old deaths. But is that um, a female killer? Yes. And is, I is that, is that a spoiler? Um, sort of, but I won't tell you like who, who winds up being the killer. But just mm-hmm. the death, like for example, the shish kebab death. You actually see, like, he's kind of they spoil it on the original. Even now, like the front cover of the actual film, there is a guy getting stabbed in the um, throat with a shish kebab or in the mouth. Yeah, I've seen that throat. poster like a thousand times. Yeah, everywhere. that's the, that's happy birthday to me. The, the guy, there's a guy in the movie that gets stabbed with a shish kebab. I just thought it was so silly, but it was unique at the same time because you n- never seen anything like it since then. Mm-hmm. It's just... Should I, watch, should I watch that movie? Oh, yeah. I would give it a watch. It's 80s horror at its best, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What uh, after we might be done early? So you want to talk about other horror movies you've seen or ha- I, that you could recommend me that I haven't seen? Yeah. All right. Um, am I on my number five? Yep. My number five is Halloween Six, the dad who gets his head blown blown up. That yeah, freaking that... scene. Yeah. Go ahead. And it, I just think it's crazy that that's only in the theatrical cut. Like, this, the stuff that you see, like, it's not in the unrated cut. Like, it's only in the what's theatrical the un- cut. What's the unrated producer's cut kill? It's just, I think he gets, like, electrocuted, but they don't show the head explosion. I don't know why, but that freaking producer's cut to me is is really shitty. It is very shitty, and I usually prefer the producer's cuts, but of Howling 6, I, pr- I prefer... The, okay, I prefer the theatrical cut for the deaths, but I like the ending of the producer's cut a lot more because it makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of on the fence with that because I like, I just like the normal version. Is that all right? Yeah. Perfect. Like, I, I don't hate the movie. I don't hate Halloween 6. I just don't like the, the whole thorn aspect, but I think that movie has some of the best kills in the franchise. Yeah, a lot of people shit on Halloween 6, but I... I like it, and it's one of my, I it's one of my favorite masks too. Other yeah, than like the original. Yeah, you used it. You and Michael Myers in a movie before. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, the I think the the score in Halloween Six is my favorite too. You know, like the yeah, the yeah. you know the lore the the den den, and it's like a rock music version of it. Yeah. yeah. I think that the, the score is freaking awesome in that movie. I just think it's simple. The the, the 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 normal version, they took out all this bullshit and crap you don't need. Like, oh, it's Michael's baby or some bullshit or it's some fucking, you know, rocks that kill him or 
whatever. They just made it. He's after his niece's daughter. I mean, he's after his niece's newborn baby. She probably got pregnant by some guy in the hospital somewhere she met. And she escapes, tries to save the baby, and that's it. That's all it is. And people are like, well, Michael Myers never tried to kill a kid before. He has. He tried to kill an infant baby. So there you go. All right, what's uh, your number five? Or you, did you say it yet? I don't know. No. Um, my number five is another kind of depressing one. It's Gage's death in Pet Cemetery. Oh, yeah. Just because they weren't really paying attention to him. And when they finally tried going after him, it was a little too late there. <laughs> I would have did the same thing. I would have brought him back, too. But I would have just kept him in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah, like, keep he, everybody like, I brought knew, back to the cage. He knew though with the cat that yeah. when when they come back they're like completely different. Like are they dead people? Like can they grow up and still age? I think they're like zombies basically, like zombie like in a way. I don't even hate this the Pet Cemetery 2 sequel that much. That's a gr- I personally it's one of my favorite sequels. A lot of people it's don't funny really to me. It's talk a about funny, it. It's, I think it's funny. I remember that scene with the with the dude from the Nightmare on Elm Street remake and the voice of Lex Luthor. He's, like, sitting there in the dinner scene. Like you want to know something, too? Huh? He's also the voice of Mr. Krabs. Uh, oh, shit, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I didn't even know that. Yep. Um... Yeah, my number four now is. Oh wait, but I want to say more about Pet Cemetery. What do you think of the? Re- we could talk about this after that. We'll save that. That's something we could yeah. talk. Yeah. Um, my number four is Friday the Thirteenth, Part Six, opening kill scene. I think that's the only freaking scene in the movie worth watching, really, because then the rest of the movie, you can't even see half the kills. It's yeah, like very but like butchered. Yeah. Editing. I think that opening scene is, like, the best scene ever in a horror movie. But then it slows down and gets pretty boring and lame, like those people in the paint bowl fucking scene. Or... Yeah. I, just hate, I hate a lot of those scenes. A lot. It, it just felt, and I, the director did kind of make it a little, like, goofy, but I didn't really like the whole goofy yet because it's a Friday the 13th film. They're not really supposed to be, like, so goofy. <laughs> But I think that's one of the best actors who played Jason. Did you meet oh, him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he actually, when I met him, I had a Halloween 2 shirt, the original Halloween 2. I had a Halloween 2 shirt on. And he was, like, busting on me because I had a Halloween shirt. He's like, what are you doing wearing that garbage? Of Halloween 2, 2009? No, the original. He <laughs> said, he's like, gar- he's like, oh, because you met a Jason actor. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because you wanted to wear a horror shirt, but you didn't have a Jason shirt. I think he was just messing with me, though. It's just how how he was. He, he was a very. It's nice like guy. when I go to. It's like when I go to a concert. If I don't have the band's, you know, name or whatever for a T-shirt, I still wear a band T-shirt anyway. Yeah. Or if some people go to a baseball game, they wear a baseball hat. It might not be a team for either team that's playing. But anyway. That could have been why, but I don't know. Do you have a Jason shirt that you could have worn? <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a bunch of Jason shirts now. I I buy a lot of my shirt from this website called Terror Threads. And then mm-hmm. Fright Rags. They're both, like, well-known um, horror brand shirts. And, Hot Topic like, is selling, like, fucking shit ton of these now. Oh, yeah. Like, they have thousands of them in there. Like, the, I, I chose two because they were the coolest ones. But those two right there, I think, are the best ones. But the other ones they had were pretty cool, too, though. They had, I think they had a, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre one that I want next. I'm probably going to get that one. Um, but what's, fr- um, am I on my, you're on number three now? No, you're on your number four. Oh, no, wait, no. You're number four. Dude, you're, you're yeah, number my four. number four. I don't know if this is another one. I don't know if you've seen it. It's also one that I would recommend. It's from the dir- same director who directed Friday the 13th Part 4. And it's the- from The Prowler. It's the Bayonet Death. Oh, I haven't seen The Prowler. Yeah, it, like T- Tom Savini also did the special. So he also did the special effects on this film. And it's 
the ba- it's just, he literally stabs a guy right th- right through the head and you see the whole b- blade just go right through the freaking skull and yeah, then the cra- and then the cra- the crazy and then what's even crazier he- is he like opens his eyes as he's like dying so like when he opens his eyes it's just white completely white his eyes are completely white <laughs> it's just really kind of disturbing to watch <laughs> is that a is that a good movie Oh, yeah. But very... I mean, not a lot of people talk about it either, but The Prowler is definitely a must-watch if you like 80s horror. Hell yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Alright, my number three is Joker's death scene in Batman Beyond when uh, Robin... um, You ever seen Batman Beyond Return of the Joker? No, I have not. Uh, When the friggin' um... Uh, Joker kidnaps Robin and he tries to turn him into his son basically and then he's like conflicted holding a gun and then Joker I mean uh, Robin just shoots uh, the Joker with the freaking gun that was really messed up like it's not the most brutal scene I've ever seen but it's just so messed up yeah alright what's uh, your number three now, my number three is from a very controversial um, entry in the series, but it's from Friday 13th, part five. It's Violet's death. The dancing, the girl who's like dancing. Yeah. I just, I just really enjoy the song. And that's why it's number three mostly, just because I think it's funny the way she's dancing and then she just turns around and gets stabbed right in the stomach. But originally, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be her getting stabbed in the stomach. Where was she supposed to get killed? Right in the private. <laughs> huh. Wow. But, like, but, and there's actually, because in the Crystal Lake Memories documentary, mm-hmm. they, they talk about how that was supposed to be, supposed to happen, and but the MPAA was like, that's too violent, so it never happened. But there's actually a photo of the actress, like, posing with the wound in her yeah. What the hell? What did he? What was he standing under her or something? <laughs> I have no idea, but I would have. That would have been kind of hilarious to see. Yeah. Uh. What's uh, my number two now? Yep. All right, my number two. I mean, th- these are my two favorite horror movies ever. So every time we do a horror list, it's gonna be my number two is always the same movie, and my number one is always the same movie. Well, not the same movie, but just at least one movie in the franchise. But uh, my number three is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, the primetime bitch scene. I think either that scene or the puppet scene is my favorite death scene. But I I just think the primetime bitch scene is the most iconic, probably Nightmare on Elm Street death scene ever. Oh, yeah. And, um... Just Dream Warriors in general has some pretty great kills in it. Yeah, it does. It really does. That's actually probably my favorite out of the whole series. I just think it's not for me because there's a couple of corny scenes in there, like the the <laughs> Wizard Master or the like. Yeah. I hate the, I hate the Wizard Master scene, but other than that, I think it's a great movie. Uh, what's your number two? Okay, my number two is from Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> you don't see you don't see this kill, but you pretty much put two and two together that this actually happened. It's the curling iron death scene. The curling iron scene from the character Judy. The freaking the first bitch. one. Yeah. You're gonna have to remind me. I haven't seen that in a while. They don't show it, but the curling iron definitely goes up her. Uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it's kind of funny because that character definitely deserves it because she's a major bitch. I have to rewatch that. I, I've seen it like five years ago, twice. Yeah, Judy. Judy is a terrible character. Like probably one of the worst horror characters out there. Just straight up bitch. I do no remember reason. the scene where he, I do remember. I think it's in one of the movies when the dude gets burned alive by some fry frying or something. Is that well? You know return, return, yeah, return to Sleepaway Camp had a guy 
died. But doesn't from that happen boil. in the first it one? Hap- yeah, he died from boiling. Well, he don't, I don't know if he dies, but he gets like severely burned with like boiling water in the first one. Like, yeah, the big yeah, ass, yeah, yeah. The big ass freaking pot of water. There's some weird, and it's like one of the few horror films too. Where they put children in the, mo- the actual camp, and they're like, you know what? We're just gonna fucking kill the children too, like the little kids. Yeah. Like hack, hack them to pieces. Sleepaway Camp though is a really, really that ending. I the only thing that I really remember the most about Sleepaway Camp is always the ending. Oh yeah, that's what a lot of people who haven't seen the film in like years will still probably remember that ending just because it was so shocking, and it's still. Is to me is one of the more shocking horror endings or endings to any movie in general. It's just I just did not see that coming at all. Neither neither did I the first time I saw it. I was like, she's a she's a fucking boy the whole time. Like what the <laughs> fuck? Uh, all right. I have not a couple honorable mentions because I wish I would have added these, but like saw every freaking death scene in the Saw movies. But my favorite death scene, besides, uh, I put six in there because I think that's the most goriest. But that scene in Saw Three, the rack with uh, Timothy Young when he gets his limbs twisted in half and then he dies with his head getting twisted in half. That's, oh yeah. Yeah, when I saw that scene in theaters, when his freaking, um, when his shin freaking popped out, like I was like. Holy yep. fucking my, crap. Um, my, I saw that in theaters with my mom when I was younger, and she hated that. She's like, why am I watching this shit? Yeah, it's really not for everybody. I uh, know. You gotta be into, like... I mean, you know, people could still like horror movies and not be into gore, though. Yeah, there's, like, psychological horror, stuff you don't really, like, see. Mm-hmm. Like, they can be scary images. It doesn't have to be blood and gore to be scary. Like, blood and gore isn't scary. I just think it's fun to watch and sick. I like sick. I like scary. I like it all. I could yeah. take any. I could take anything. Um, and a number, I mean, a number, um, another honorable mention I have is probably in uh, the original Halloween when he kills uh, um, the, the, the fucking dude. Bob. And he, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he t- and he freaking stabs him and wears the, you know, the ghost uh, uh, blanket on, and then he he chokes out freaking PJ Souls. <laughs> that was my fa- yeah. That's my favorite my favorite Halloween deaths. Well, in the original movie. Do you have any honorable mentions before you do your number one? Because I'm gonna I let mean, you go I first. Didn't, I mean, I didn't have any on the list, but I can say one that I forgot to put on the list and I kind of hate myself for it and it's from the original Suspiria with um I forget what her character's name I think it was might I think her character's name was Patricia if I'm correct and she it was just this weird you don't really know what's going on at first she's being like chased by somebody and then she all of a sudden gets stabbed she gets stabbed a couple times on heart and then like basically falls through this like glass ceiling and she gets hung but she's already dead to begin with and it's just just kind of disturbing the look on her face when she's hung how was that <laughs> how was that scene in the remake that didn't happen in the remake but there there was a pretty kind of disturbing scene in the remake that so happened. is this movie it's completely its own thing it's sort of like the original, but there's it's there's some stuff that's like drastically different, yeah. Hmm. I still gotta watch both the original and the remake now. They're they're both. I mean, uh, the new Suspiria. I wasn't. I was. It was all right for what it was, I guess. But I prefer the original. That's more of the classic. All right. So, any more honorable mentions? Nope. What's uh, your number one? My number one is not really a um, like gory death by any means, but it was very iconic, and that is um, Judas' death, death in the original Halloween. Just yeah. because that oh, whole yeah. yeah that whole opening scene, you don't know who is killing her, and then all of a sudden, the dad takes the mask off, and it's this 
little kid. <laughs> it's like holy shit. And look shit. at the look at the size of that knife on that kid too. It's like bigger than his fucking head. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But yeah, that's one of the, the sickest scenes ever in a horror movie too. Or probably the best kill scene ever. Yeah. I wish that was my number one now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but my number one is obviously a Halloween movie. And now I feel like my my uh, number one is pretty weak compared to that one. But it's the scene in Halloween 2 when he kills the security guard and hits him over the head with the hammer. I thought that was pretty badass. I love the original Halloween 2. Like, it, it's just a great film. And I like... I mean... It's not as scary, in my opinion, as the original, just because they show more... In the original, they don't show all this, like, blood and gore, and then, like, all of a sudden in this one, there's, like, all this <laughs> gore in it, but it's still... It's yeah, but still in, a sequel, you always, in a sequel, you always gotta step up, you know? You gotta always... And, uh, that, and, that, was, and that was during the slasher craze of the 80s, so they... I, I completely understand why they went that, that direction. Yeah, and plus, like, it has to, it has to, you know, um, get people into it because if you're gonna just do the same thing again and again and again, yeah, they're gonna get bored. Yeah, so you gotta, you gotta do something new there. Or the yeah. scene, matter of fact, probably the scene in the hot tub is better. Like, I think that movie has great fucking death scenes. Like, all of them are awesome. Even the opening one where he kills that lady. You know the, the the Mr. Elrod. She's talking. I think she was he was beating her or whatever, and then he just pops up out of nowhere and stabs her. Like that freaking scene, I jumped out of my skin when I first saw it. Now I could see it coming a mile away. But, oh yeah. But when I first saw it, I really jumped out of my skin. Just like the the scene in Friday the Thirteenth, the original. I never freaking saw that coming when he pops out of the out of the um lake like that. Yeah, I remember the first time watching that, I freaking flew in the air. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> or the scene in Carrie when her hand pops out of the grave. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's another scene. I did not even see Carrie yet. I have not seen any documentary. Like, this is before I think half these documentaries were made. Yeah. So, like, I didn't even know, like, half these things yet. So, like, when that freaking hand popped up, I was, like, just freaking... Like, really just scared out of my mind. But in the remake, I don't even think they had that scene. Like, they're pretty much dead. Well, like, their remake of Carrie? Yeah, like, the whole house just shook and the stuff, and that was it? Yeah. Did they have that scene where her hand pops out of the no. debris? No, it was, like, a weird, like, CGI thing, which is the only thing I hated about that film was the ending. Was just, oh, like, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought the CGI was pretty good. Oh, yeah, it's still good. It was just the ending was kind of bleh. All, all the endings to carry are kind of bleh because they're, not, they're not, not even close to the book. Yeah, true. They're I still think that different. scene... I still think that scene, though, really scared the crap out of me still. I just never saw it coming at all. Yeah, that scene... That ending scene in the original carry is what got Sean, is what inspired Sean Cunningham to do that scene in the end of Fr the original Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I remember him saying that on uh whatever documentary it is. But um yeah, so that's pretty much our list of our top 10 favorite horror kills. And if you have any comments about what your top 10 favorite horror kills are, let us know. All right, so let's just, you want to talk just random horror stuff? Yeah, random, random horror films that maybe each of us, or one of us has seen, but the other hasn't. All right, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen The Loved Ones? No, but I've always wanted to check it out. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. It's like a, it should have been called uh, Prom Queen instead. Because it's like about this girl who is, like, kidnapping, uh, you know, prom kings and shit. Like, I can actually picture you in a Carrie movie for some reason. <laughs> as who, as who, Carrie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or in a prom, in a prom somewhere with your boyfriend. And just killing people. 
Yeah, exactly. No, well, no, not, not even killing people, just in like a romantic comedy or something. I like <laughs> you fit that. I don't know why. Uh, but um, what else is there? Oh yeah, the loved ones. I think that movie should have been called Prom Queen, but it's pretty sick. It's a sick movie. That's the only complaint I have, though. Like, why is it called The Loved Ones? It makes no sense. But the, the movie is really good. All right, what's a movie that you could recommend? Um, uh, when I recommend movies, I actually recommend a lot of, for some reason, I recommend a lot of, like, Italian horror films just because mm-hmm. not a, maybe not a lot of people have seen them. But this is one of my favorite films by um, the director Lucio Fulci. You might have seen the original zombie that he directed. Uh, yeah, maybe. This, I mean, the zombie... What, what, is it, what is it about? Remind me. Um, there's a scene in it where a zombie is fighting a shark. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> oh, that, that. That's another one that I would recommend because that's one of, like, one of Lucio Fulci's most popular um, films. But another mm-hmm. one that he's done is um, called the New York Ripper. It's mm-hmm. very, it's very, um, it, might, it might not be for everybody. It's very sleazy, <laughs> but it's just a fun film. The killer, you don't know, obviously you don't know who he is till the end, but the killer ha- does a duck voice. So it sounds like Donald Duck <laughs> killing <laughs> somebody. It's, kind of, it, it's, it's pretty goofy. But there, there's some pretty good gory kills, and that and that's one of the things about Lucio Fulci. His films have like it's over the top gore, but it's awesome because there's just blood squirting everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, it's freaking crazy. And he also does movies where like all his horror films have have to have some sort of death scene that involves an eyeball getting stabbed or <laughs> or pushed out or something and it's just crazy well i would recommend like all of his films honestly <laughs> what's a slasher movie that i haven't seen that you could recommend me slasher film I'm trying to there's a there's one called blood rage it's pretty good all right um have you ever seen the movie high tension yes i actually own it great film you- yeah, that's a sick movie. I was hoping you didn't see it. I was, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't expecting the ending though. Yeah, like I really, really, when I first saw it, I was like, "Holy crap!" It's a, it's French, isn't it? It's supposed to be French or something. Yeah, it's like hot tension or something. It's like yeah, H-A- hot, yeah, hot, hot tension or some yeah. shit. And the poster is really deceiving though. Like they should change the poster because. I mean, I don't know. Like the name, the title makes no sense, and the poster makes no sense. Yeah. Like it's a, it's her on the cover with an axe, but it's really kind of spoilerish. I think. Like don't don't leave that on there. I think the movie should have been called like I don't know something else, like just something else. It's just a weird title. Even it there's is. like five different titles for this movie too. Like oh, I think yeah. uh, the, there's one that m- one, somebody I know who has one from New Zealand and it has like a completely different title. I don't remember what it was called, but it was completely different. It's not hot, hot day tension or something. It's something completely different. I wish I remember what it was, but it's something else. Uh, what's another movie you could recommend? Oh man, um, I'm trying to think right now. Oh, this is a pretty good one. It's uh, a t- actually made-for-TV film from 1981, I think, and it's called Dark Night of the Scarecrow. What's that about? Um, it's about this, like he's kind of like, he's kind of um mentally challenged, I should say, because I can't say flat out say this. That's offensive. Yeah. But he's mentally challenged. This mentally challenged guy gets basically wrongly accused for something that he didn't do. And he gets killed, but he might not be dead. I don't, it's, it's very, it's, it's interesting because 
it's a made for like I said, it's a made for TV film, so there's not like over the top. There's like not really you don't don't really show any of the deaths, but it's still a, a fun film. I don't I don't want to go into detail about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but you should check it out. Have you ever seen the movie The Den? No. It's a found footage movie about like the how the water. It's kind of like Cabin Fever, where the water is all polluted, and everybody's like getting infected and dying. But it's a found footage version of it. Hmm. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I love found footage movies. There's like thousands of them I watch. I love. See, them. I'm not. See, I'm not the biggest per when it comes to like. I'm, I'm not really a huge fan, but I like. I I obviously like some of them, like the Hell House movies, the Hell House LLC movies, and like the House is October Bill. Those are fun films. So a lot of them I like, but then there's some that I don't like. <laughs> I actually like all the Paranormal Activity movies. Ooh, see, I don't. I only like the third one. I really just am like a junkie for them, though. I know that's weird, but I don't. I mean, people shit on found footage, but I I like it. They're, they're different. And they don't. Yeah, it's I mean... cool. I think I like how it, it's also branching out to different genres of movies too. Like, there's even a superhero one, Chronicle. Yeah. You ever seen Chronicle? No. <laughs> yeah, you should watch that. That's a really good movie. I mean, I, if you're not really... I'm sure you're into superhero stuff, because I've seen you in a Spider-Man shirt before. So yeah, I'm a big I, Marvel I, fan. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's uh, your favorite Spider-Man villain? Carnage. Yeah, same. It's funny how we're both diehard horror fans, and the first one we think of is the serial killer, Cletus Cassidy. Yeah, I just love the whole, uh, just the whole, um, like, design, too. Yeah, he's the sickest character in Spider-Man. But I, I think um, if he's in Venom 2, he better look just like freaking Venom. I mean, uh, he better look just like Carnage. If he looks different, I'm going to be pissed off. Well, I like that Woody Harrelson is Cletus Cassidy because it's Woody Harrelson. <laughs> It is funny to see him because he's in Cheers and all that. He's more of a comedian. I mean, yeah. even I think comedians, like my first choice for Carnage, is Jim Carrey, and he's like the biggest comedian alive. Speaking of Woody Harrelson, though, what are your thoughts on um, Zombieland Two? Is there a trailer or nothing yet? No. I I really don't believe it's coming out at all until I see footage. I think all, they're all confirmed, though. Like, all the original cast is confirmed to come back. But that's been confirmed since 2009. I've been waiting since then. And then they do, like, a like a short-lived, like... They're supposed to be, like, a TV series or something. Yeah, on Amazon or something. And it wound or... up bombing. I think it only, like, ended up being, like, one episode or something. With 20 views each. <laughs> I don't know. Like, for a TV show, that's pretty horrible i just I, i've been waiting to see a sequel to zombie i even saw that in theaters i've been waiting for a sequel to zombie land since 2009 and they've been saying i don't understand why the hell it's taken so long either it's not like anybody's busy jesse eisenberg i mean he's done other movies since then i mean emma stone is probably the most maybe one of the more busiest people in the cast yeah probably I think, uh, but that's a really awesome, funny-ass movie. I really love that movie. Oh, yeah. I just hope the sequel actually comes out. I want it to be as funny, though. I'm sure it, uh, I'm sure it is. And now in the sequel, instead of him looking for Twinkies, hopefully he's looking for something else funny, Woody Harrelson. Ding-dongs. Like he, yeah, he wanted a Twinkie so fucking bad, and, it, and he finally gets one. It was pretty awesome. But the sequel, I can't even, I don't even know where they're going to go. Like, they're all alive. They were all stuck on that, you know, car in that carnival place. That's pretty much where it ended. So I don't really yeah. know where it's going to go. Maybe they found more survivors or something. Hopefully. <laughs> what do you think it, uh, the movie's going to be? I'm really, because it's been, I don't really know what they're exactly obviously they're probably going to be 
on the road again. Mm-hmm. Doing doing something. And then probably meeting some people along the way, because that's how those zombie movies work. Yeah, probably, yeah. They just... Maybe, uh, and Bill Murray, that was hilarious. Him, him yeah, I, I, ho- I hope they have some sort of funny cameo again, because that was freaking funny. What do you think of Ghostbusters 3 actually coming out? Is it the original, like, yeah. Scott? Same, di- <laughs> same director as the first two. They're saying it's going to have past characters, and Bill Murray is all over every trailer. People are saying Bill Murray is in the movie. Oh, my God. Aren't they, like, all really old? I mean, it's. I think that would make it even more funny that they're older and up in age. <laughs> they, can, they can't really, like, get all, get. get get go like they can't go as fast as they like Mm -hmm. it's like uh back in business ghostbusters 3 back in like that's what they should have called it like back in the saddle or something i don't know what's it called though just ghostbusters 3 i think so yeah i mean but i'm just like why the hell did they do that horrendous remake instead (laughs) of this like it doesn't make any sense women in power (laughs) powering movies apparently even though yeah. I, the route I mean, they went was kind of shitty. I don't even mind them being females. I just think that the actresses they got are... Like, not Kristen Wiig. I think Melissa McCarthy is really annoying. Yeah. And that black lady is really annoying. I think it should have been people like Kristen Wiig, Ellen DeGeneres, and someone else. That's who I would have picked. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't know who I would have picked, but... Those are those Ellen DeGeneres would have been freaking awesome in a Ghostbusters movie, but instead you get Melissa McCarthy, who I can't freaking stand the sight of. Honestly, I'd rather Melissa McCar Melissa McCarthy more than Amy Schumer. Who's Amy Schumer? Oh, I'm glad you know she she's just really obnoxious and she steals like other people's jokes and shit. Well, what was she in that you could maybe tell me? Do you know? I never actually seen a movie with her, but I've seen some stuff like stuff on TV with her, and she's just obnoxious. She's a bunch of like shitty. Oh, that fat, that that blonde girl. Yeah. Yeah, she's really annoying. She is kind of annoying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who? What else? I want to know. Like, I'm trying to. I would have put a, a two females and a male. You know, like I would have had just better freaking females. Oh, yeah. A male Ghostbuster and two females. I think I that, would, had... that, would, that would probably be all right. Like, I just didn't like who they cast. Like, I don't care. It's females. It's just. That... And it's unfunny, too. Like, when you're doing. Sorry for my language, but when you're doing queef jokes, it's not funny. <laughs> I'm just fucking scared, like, standing there, like, sitting there laughing, but, like, not in a good way laughing, like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. What do you think of, uh, the Pet Cemetery remake coming out? Uh, I'm really not, I mean, I don't think it'll be terrible, but it's not gonna be, like, the original at all. I'm, I, I think it's probably... I'm probably not going to like it as much as the original, but I think this is probably going to be just as good as the Carrie remake. Like, they're going to change and alter some things here and there, but it's I think it's going to be pretty much the exact same movie, just with modern actors and modern settings. Yeah. So that's really what I'm expecting. I'm really looking forward to John Lithgow in this movie, because I love him as an actor. Mm-hmm. Like, he was so fucking awesome. Oh, man, I should have added Dexter Kills in this list. But he's freaking so awesome in Dexter season four. He is such an amazing actor. He, he like he's more of a comedian than anything else. And then he completely transformed himself into one of the scariest serial killers I've ever seen put onto TV. Like if you don't want to watch the whole se- series of Dexter, I would just recommend you watch season four, and that's it. Just for him. Just watch that. It's 12 episodes. It's on Netflix somewhere. Just watch that. It's pretty yeah, well. sick. Just watch season four. Just Or just the first episode of season four so you can see what I'm talking about. Because it's really messed up. 
Yeah, just watch one episode of season four. <laughs> it's sick. Like, if you love fucking sick-ass, scary serial killers, he's the best one I've ever seen. Probably ever. And John Lithgow is, is awesome, so I can't wait to see him in this. Even though he's not freaking Frankenstein or whatever, the dude from the old one, sometimes dead is better. Like, he's so much cooler than the other oh, one. Oh, yeah. But I still love John Lithgow. I'm curious to see what his death's going to be like. Yeah. Because I remember in the original, his like the when he, when little Gage cuts him with the scalpel in the kill in the Achilles tendon, I was like, oh, that that ugh, that whole scene it was just creepy. That baby is not gonna be anywhere near as good as an amazing fucking actor. It's a fucking that kid is a baby. Yeah. And he's in a lot of horror movies, isn't he? In A Nightmare on Elm Street too. Also, is that the yeah, same? Yeah, new, new Nightmare. Yep. That kid, at that age, I can't believe how amazing he is. How did he even do that? He's not even fully functioning yet. <laughs> I, did, I like wasn't speaking that many words, but he had just a, a, a great impression on like, like, he was freaking terrifying. If I saw that kid coming after me, I would be like, uh, But remember bye. his face when he was angry looking? Yeah. yeah. How the hell did they do that? How did they make this kid look like that? What did they do? When he killed the mom. Yeah. Spoil, spoil, spoilers to anybody who's listening. The, the just... thing I'm really, really skeptical on is the mom's sister. Yes. It's not going to be anywhere near as scary as hers. And the fact that in the original it was played by a guy. Really? Yeah. That's the a guy? Zelda. Yep. Holy shit, I didn't know that. I just thought that whole... that Oh, that sister was freaking terrifying, too. It gave me nightmares when I was little for days. And that is one of the few bo- like few movies that I think... Like, is pretty accurate to the book. Mm-hmm. Because I've read the book before. And... That's the only Stephen King book I probably haven't read. I read The Shining, I read It, and I read Carrie... But the other one I had, I haven't read Pet Cemetery. I have a, I have a whole collection of Stephen King books, like a shit ton of books. Yeah, he's awesome. People shit on him though. Like I'm not gonna say what reviewer he is, but a lot of people started shitting on him, like because he's like, they they're like, oh, those made for TV movies are bad. No, they're not. No, there's some pretty good ones. I I watched The Langoliers. You ever seen that? No. Sleepwalker. Well, like- Sleepwalkers, Sleepwalkers is, yeah, it's, I, that a lot of people shit on that film, but I think it's freaking entertaining. Yeah, I like all, I like all his movies. It's not every day that you see um, somebody die by a corn cob. Yeah. Um. What else is oh it chapter two? What do you think about that? Um, I mean. I wasn't a big fan of the part two in the original miniseries because of adults, but I really hope that they do this one, like, way better. Like, I hope it... It obviously will probably be better because it's not made for TV. It's a actual theatrical re- release film. I just want to see this movie for the cast alone. Like, this cast yeah, is, like, is amazing. I'm really excited for the cast. Like, James McAvoy, like, he's, like... How the hell did, he, did they get him? Because he's been in, like, so much shit, like, lately. Like, that's... He's my favorite actor right now. He is so freaking good in Split and in Glass. Like, he deserved a freaking award just for his performance as Professor X in X-Men Days of Future Past, and he didn't get it then. He's such a good fucking actor. He could play anything now. Like, if, if you've seen Glass, see Glass just for him, because... It's well, like I, well can... I want to see Glass, because I was a big fan of Split, so... Yeah, he, it's like he completely transformed himself. It's like, I don't see the same person anymore. I mean, it's hard to believe this is the same guy who came from, you know, Wanted, that movie. And he's awesome in that, too. I love Wanted. You ever seen Wanted? No. It's with Angelina Jolie. It's like a action movie. Like, it's like kind of like The Matrix. It's pretty cool. 
really underrated too. Like they should have had a sequel. I'm also really excited to see Bill Hader in this film. Yeah, he's gonna be cool too. He's more of a comedian though. But yeah, yeah. That, that's that's why I'm kind of like excited to come. I'm just, I just want to see how he's gonna be in a horror film. What about who they cast as the older girl? Um, I'm not really that um upset about it because I've seen a lot of films that she's been in. She's pretty a pretty good actress. She was. Well, she was in that Mama that the direct that um, same director print- who made Mama. Yeah, yeah. I've She's- seen Mama. That was I- all right. I thought Mama was pretty creepy. The way yeah, she, she looked. She was in that. And, like, Is she who played stuff. Mama? No, she was like the main girl in that, like the older oh. girl. She had like black hair in it, though. But I'm not. I mean, Jessica. I think she'll do a pretty good job. All right, and what do you think of the Child's Play remake coming out? Um, I mean, I'll still see it. Is it going to be, like, theatrical released, or is it going to be, like, a straight-to-DVD Blu-ray thing? I'm pretty sure it's going to be released in theaters. I mean, it's not going to be the same as the original ones, but I'll probably still see it just because of the title. (laughs) I just don't like how they changed the complete story about who Chucky is. It's like... It's, he's not I mean, even, he's a robot, right? It's like, yeah, that's not, I mean, I understand why <clears throat> Don Mancini has said a thousand times that he does not like, <clears throat> sorry, he does not like the uh, voodoo aspect, and he thinks it's gotten really cheesy over time, and you just can't believe it anymore. Like, how could this be possible? Well, guess what? It's a movie. I'm not here to watch something realistic. I'm here to watch something that is out of reality. Yeah. And it may, like, I just don't understand why would you take away everything that makes Chucky who he is. He's not Charles Lee Ray. He's not going after, he's not trying to put his soul into a kid. That's the whole point of his character. Charles Lee Ray is Chucky. Why would he be called Chucky in this if he's not Charles Lee Ray? It's not even a good guy doll, is it? I, I, I want to give it a chance. I think the, gar, the the doll, it's a buddy doll. The look of the doll looks good. I could be completely dead wrong and this ends up being good. Like, as I always admit when I'm wrong, I do. Because there are tons of movies that I said were shit, that looked like shit. Like Dread. You ever seen Dread? No. But that's such a fucking badass movie. And that trailer is garbage. Do not even get, don't watch the trailer just watch the movie if you want i mean it's not a horror movie but that has some of the sickest brutal shit i've seen in a long I, time too. i feel like if you go into a horror film with very low expectations they wind up being better than you thought they were gonna be i just want to be wrong i want this to be good but when i'm thinking of chucky i want to actually feel like i'm watching a chucky movie i don't want to like, if you wanted to just make an AI creepy robot doll movie, go ahead, and I probably would have liked it. But if you're taking Chucky and just slapping the name Child's Play on it and completely changing the story and just keeping the doll's look, what's the point? On another note, though, I'm pretty um, curious to see how the TV series is going to be. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm 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 really thinking that's probably not even gonna happen. But I don't know. You don't think it's gonna happen? Probably not. I think it's all talk that oh we'll still make more. Yeah, maybe if this remake fails. And a TV series that they're doing right now, and I am super excited about it. But it's the thing is, it's only on that app Shutter. It's the Creep Show TV series. It's out. It's not out now. They're like filming it all right now. Like I Greg can't fucking Nic- wait for that. Like Greg Nicotero is a part of it. Stephen King's a part of it. His son Joe Hill is a part of it. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. And they're bringing back the Twilight Zone also. That's pretty cool too. But I'm super excited about Cre- the Creep Show TV series just because they announced like what one of their first stories is gonna be, and it's like a really um, disturbing story that that Stephen King published yeah i freaking love creep show the first two movies and that's another thing if you like 
if you don't have shutter, you should just seriously get it. I mean, it costs money. Like, I think it's like, I forget how much it is. I don't think it's that much. But Probably it's the great. same as Netflix or something. It's a great, like, I've watched movies on there that I'd never heard of before, and I freaking loved them. It's all horror. All horror. It's just a, it's just a horror app? Can it's you get ba- it on, yeah, it's basically. Can you get it on, like, a like a PS3 or, or Apple TV to be on there? I think so. I know like Roku does it too. So probably like, it's not just a phone thing. It's not just a phone thing. It's you can put it on. Yeah. Streaming things. Oh, okay, good. So yeah, I'll probably get it just for that. It's a a great app. Like wonderful. Like I freaking love it. There was also just one more point I wanted to make about this Child's Play remake, because if someone tells me, and I'm not saying if anybody out there is wrong for this opinion, if this is, if they're trying to tell me that it's a good thing, that they're changing it, because why be the same thing? I understand your argument, but when they did, like, let's say the Thing remake, that is its own thing, but it kept the essence of what the story was and what it was about, not taking anything away. They just added and made it cooler and better. Same thing with the Fly remake. Same thing with the Blob remake. They added what they added to what the story was and made it ten times better. They didn't take away things that made it worse. Yeah. I just I just really hope they're just fucking with us and he is Charles Ray. Hey, or maybe really they hope. just or they just don't have or maybe they just have the wrong information and they're just we just we just don't know shit about the movie, you know. Because why would there be a Chinese guy who commits suicide, and then, like, is he the doll? Like, is he a killer? Like a murderer, or something who kills people, or a mad scientist? Like, this is not Chucky though. Still, like, I feel like I'm watching some. I feel like I'm talking about something else. Like, I mean, I should just get over it, I guess. But it's just I'm a freaking Child's Play fan. When does it come out again? This year, this uh, this year, I think, and and it's the trailer. The trailer could completely, you know, make me feel like I'm wrong completely. The trailer comes out, I think, February something. So I hope. So I hope <laughs> that I'm. I hope that it proves me wrong. I really do. I want. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm not really. I mean, I'll still see it, but. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's going to be so good, or oh, it's going to be so... I'm going with no expectations. Like... Because, like, I, at first I was like, I'm not going to watch this movie at all. But then when, yeah. I saw the, when I, then when I saw what the doll looked like, I was like, okay, you got my attention a little. Now with a trailer, you can get my interest or completely get me to just not even want to watch it whatsoever. Because the doll at least looks like Chucky to me. Like that looks like Chucky. So if he yeah. looks like, if he looks like Chucky, and he's friggin', like, what about his voice? Brad DeRiff is not even the voice either. What if no. he does? What if he doesn't talk? Or it's like a robot voice. Or if it's what if you know that voice? Hi, I'm Chucky. Want to play? What if he talks like that the whole time? I'm gonna kill you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I'm interested to see how the mechanics are for this new movie. Hopefully, it's better than any of the older movies. Yeah. Hopefully, they don't use freaking CGI. Uh, you never know. 2019. Uh, what do you think of um them making Gremlins three? Are they really? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I mean, gonna, I liked it, I liked both of the Gremlins movies. What do you think of? Have you ever seen the movie The Boy? Yeah. Did you like it? No. <laughs> I didn't. I, I actually liked it. I, I was very bored. I don't know. It is kind of boring. It is really boring. And then the and then it's like the whole time they're trying to, you know, make you believe this doll's alive, and it's really not, and it just pissed me off a little. <laughs> But I like, like what was what was the point of that? Uh huh. But I like how they have uh, I like that the ending a little because it was a little surprising that he was still alive, you know, wandering to the house. Yeah. Um, what else is coming out? 
What what is what is coming out this year that you're looking forward to other than if it's a horror movie, if it's not a horror movie, or whatever? Well, pretty. I excited for um Spider Man. Yeah, home. Far From Home. Yeah. Just because I like awesome. I I personally liked Spider Man Homecoming because it was I think it was different and they didn't include like a villain that you've seen like 50 times before that like you don't really see vulture a whole lot in mm-hmm. like especially in like the live action spider-man films um I'm it was really nice ex- to see him and actually nice to just have one villain as the villain yeah i'm really excited for the extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile the oh hell yeah because i at first, a lot of people are like, why is Zac Efron Ted Bundy? And I saw the pictures, I'm like, he fucking looks like Ted Bundy. It's sick. He looks just <laughs> freaking like him. <laughs> and it's just like, okay. It's going to be awesome. Like, I can't wait. The trailer just came out. I, have to, I haven't yeah. done a video I haven't done a video on it yet, but I, I forgot because every time I watch the freaking trailer, this computer freaking shut down on me every time. So I forgot 20 minutes later to do the video. But it looks really, really, really awesome. Like, it looks better than I thought it was going to be. Because hopefully it's just not a trailer that they cut up to get me to want to watch it or you want to watch it. You know, like horror fans to watch it. Yeah. Hopefully it's not just like a boring-ass movie and it has nothing to do with anything that they showed in the trailer. Because that happens Uh, a lot. Yeah. But I'm really looking forward to it. I think he looks awesome. It looks awesome. Yeah, he's the dude from High School Musical, but he's a good actor. <laughs> yeah, he's he does a, a bunch of like he is very diverse when it comes to film because he's done dramas, he's done comedies, he's done, and now he's doing like shit like this, and it's just like I, I don't he, compare him. I don't compare him to someone like you know Robert Pattinson or somebody like that. Yeah, like, I just think he's a good actor. He was in a you know a. A Disney show. That's Disney. They have credibility to me. Even honestly, though, honestly, though, if he wasn't in those films, I don't think he would be as big as he is now. Mm-hmm. Personally. Yeah, exactly. Like Disney has, you know, good stuff going from them for them. That is not my taste, but there yeah, are people who who like that stuff. Um, another movie though that I'm excited for is um Happy Death Day to You. Oh hell yeah! Just because I loved the first happy death day and that yeah, was kind of like too. and which is funny because when I, I remember when i first saw the trailer i was like this looks like shit <laughs> like straight up shit and i watched it i'm like this is it's the it's groundhog day but a horror yeah basically version, a horror version of groundhog day i thought it was pretty cool like that was a cool movie like i wouldn't like say it was like the greatest sickest no, horror film no. but i i really liked it though and the sequel looks really cool, too. Like, it looks fun. Like, these movies are fun. Hopefully it turns into, like, a franchise that goes to 20, because I wouldn't mind it. Another one that I'm kind of interested in seeing is Shazam. Oh, yeah. They, they said they were supposed to be releasing a trailer again. When the hell are they going to give us a new trailer? It's a good question. It There's looks, a lot, it though. It looks really good, though. It looks There's really a lot, good. though, that I'm super... Like, just a ton of... Like, Avengers Endgame. Just, mm-hmm. Like, a bunch of stuff that I'm excited to see, because... I just think it's a great year for... And then Godzilla, King of the Monsters. That's another one. But my most anticipated movie of the year is... Can you guess? It? Chapter nope. 2? Nope. What? Joker. Joker, all that one with um, Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. yeah. Did you see the teaser? No, I did not. When he's just standing there and then you see his makeup reveal? Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, he looks freaking awesome. I could go without the dot on his nose, but I st- I'm really coming around on it, and I really don't even notice it now. He's got, like, a red dot circling around his nose. Yeah. But I think he, I think his makeup looks freaking awesome. He's going to be sick. I can't wait to see what they... I mean, the Joker usually doesn't have an origin, but I don't mind them telling us his origin when they do. Like, I, I like it, but I don't... Like, I don't mind either way. Like, either way, if it doesn't have a, uh, 
an origin, he's still scary and awesome and badass. Like, people prefer him without an origin because it's like, it just makes him, you know, he's just like, uh, it just, you just don't understand why he's doing this or whatever. And then when he does have an origin, it's like, it's cool too. And they're completely changing it. His name is completely different. It's, it's Arthur Fleck. Like, it's, that's his name in the movie, Arthur Fleck. When his real name is Jack Napier. I mean, that's not even his real name either. But you really don't know what the Joker's real name is at all. Like, you don't... No one knows. He doesn't have an origin. He does. We don't know where he really came from. He just, he just shows up and kills and freaking destroys freaking everything in sight, really. That's really what he was when he first showed up. What do you think of the live-action Lion King movie? I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. And I like that um, that James Earl Jones is playing the voice of Mufasa again. <laughs> and they have, uh, what's his name? I think his name is John Glover is the voice of Simba. The kid from Pinocchio was the Donald. voice of Simba. Donald, 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 Donald Glover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, I really wish it was the same voice actor who did it in the first one. Oh, what's his face? Um, but he was like, you know, it's just going to be weird seeing someone else singing all those songs. And Seth Rogen as Pumbaa. That's perfect. That is just fun. Yeah, yeah. It's sad. Even in the original, it's kind of, you, you can imagine, like, Seth Rogen as a voice. I can't wait to see what Pumbaa looks like. And what's the other dude, the other little thing's name again? Timon. Yeah. Wait, I, don't I, know. Can't, I'm... I can't wait to see what they look like. Billy Eichner does the voice for him. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure I'm probably going to like all the voices because they're all good actors, voice actors. They could do a good job regardless. Like, I could get yeah. over it. I could get over it. At least it's still J- James Earl Jones as Mufasa. But you could have got someone else, too, who could have been good in their own way. I mean, but his voice is, like, iconic, though. Mm-hmm. But I think they should have changed it just so it's a different movie because if what's if it's everybody that's the same and it's a shot for shot the exact same movie just live action then what's the point? You know, so I get I mean I love that he's still the voice of of Mufasa but I just think they should change things a little. Like it should be a completely different experience. Like take some of the songs out. We don't need some of those songs. Make it feel more real, like we're really in freaking, you know, where these animals live. Like, like make it feel like I'm really watching, you know, the circle of life, like in a freaking animal kingdom, you know? Like, it's a cartoon. That was a cartoon movie. I want to feel like I'm really there. Yeah. Anything else you're looking forward to this year? No, that, that's basically it. Most, that's pretty much everything. Any sequels you wish would get a, a sequel of a horror movie? Uh, not really. <laughs> the Burning Two. Eh. So a lot of the, a lot of those like eighties horror films I think are fine like on their own. Just some... make a new Twilight Zone movie. Oh God, it's. Been a while since the first Twilight Zone movie. All right, so I guess stay tuned for another podcast coming soon. This was fun. Let us know what some of the movies you're looking forward to of, you know, 2019 are. This is going to be a fun year for movies. I'm. I think the Joker movie really is the only thing that really makes me feel like this is going to be a big year. Like I'm a Marvel fan, but like I don't go crazy over that. It's like I'm not like holy crap type thing, you know. See how I'm different. I, I love I love Marvel. Anything Marvel. I, I love I love Marvel, but like, all right. I like Marvel and Sp- like I love Spider Man. So there's that. But then I like Marvel, but I love DC. Like I'm more of a DC fan. Yeah. Than a but Mar- I won't. I won't. I'm not like that that Marvel fan who like shits on a DC fan for like in DC more. I know there's people out there that like shit. It's on just each the characters other. I grew up with. Yeah, and it's it's. 
a personal favorite. Like, if somebody mm-hmm. likes DC, they like DC. If somebody likes Marvel, I like Marvel. I'm not going to fight about it. It's just what you expose to first, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, But, uh, yeah, so whatever you guys are looking forward to coming out, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to Ariana Schaefer's channel on YouTube. And thanks for listening. Peace. See you guys.